this final thing I wanted to talk about is you talk about uh, it's a forgotten mission of the church. What is that? Um, the the pro life cause, and I think specifically of the Protestant Church. Um, I have been working with Live Action, um, which is a one of the largest pro life organizations in the country, and their leader is uh, this woman named Lila Rose, and she's been one of my inspirations for years. And she's Catholic, and most of the people who are part of the organization are Catholic, and wow. there's a few who are believers as well. But the Catholic Church is actually the largest organization in the world to take a stance on abortion, um, and to take a pro life stance on abortion. Wow. At that. And they have really done an incredible job of creating charities and organizations that help um, women who are facing crisis pregnancies and really being the hands and feet of Jesus to um, men and women who are facing crisis pregnancy or um, maybe they have a pregnancy that they want to keep, but they don't have enough money to feed the rest of their kids. Mm -hmm. um, so there are organizations, whether they're just Catholic or if they're run by nuns or um, there's like the Sisters of Life and um, several different other organizations that are incredible and doing wonderful work. And so I started being there as a non-Catholic sitting in these meetings going, why hasn't the, the non-denominational church or the Protestant church as a whole taken a stance on this? Why haven't we said, yeah, we're pro-life. Why, why haven't we taken a stance? Um, and I think part of the problem is that we're kind of all, all over the place on like the Catholic church. They do have like some uniting doctrines that they all have. Yeah. To there's just um, Catholics. It's not like crazy. They actually all have things. some like sort of, I guess they call them like sects, but they're, they're kind of like denominations because they have like oh, really? the, the Roman right and they have the Dominican right. I don't know. I've just been learning this because I have all these Catholic friends now. Uh -huh. and I'm like, I never knew any of these things. Um, <laughs> it's very interesting, but they do an incredible job because it's not just um, this understanding that murder is wrong that <laughs> should lead us to the conclusion of being pro-life, but it's mm -hmm. also, um, they have this incredible doctrine called theology of the body. A lot of it's very interesting. Um, and it was by one of the Pope, Pope John Paul something, who who gave this teaching about the, the purpose that God created our bodies for. And it's part of what's influenced the Catholic Church to be not just pro-life when it comes to abortion, but um, they're very pro-life about the dignity of human existence, that every mm -hmm. single human being has an innate dignity because of us being made in the image of God, mm -hmm. and that God did not accidentally give us physical bodies. Um, and if you're Catholic listening to this, I'm probably butchering this <laughs> theology. Forgive her. Yes, forgive, forgive me. me for saying there's no, you know, there's just Catholics. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I didn't really know until like literally a few months ago, yeah. but there it's, it's a really cool, if you're into like learning about other things outside of like our typical wheelhouses, non-denominational spirit-filled Christians, it's a really interesting teaching theology of the body. Yeah. But, I um, out. yeah, but basically each of us has, has a dignity and has, um, a part of the image of God in us and, and our bodies were created on purpose and for a purpose. And mm -hmm. so for us to just act like the physical is irrelevant is kind of, um, acting like we know better than God, because then why did he give us the physical world? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so I just, I've been really in inspired to keep speaking out about this whenever I'm talking to non-Catholic people and organizations that we need to take a stance and be pro-life. And, you know, you can be pro-life and not be doing anything about it. Um, like, it's okay to be just against something that's wrong without actually taking action. Mm -hmm. But we also, as believers, should be taking action to help yeah. women and children who are facing a situation like this, um, especially women who are facing crisis pregnancies. And so there's tons of organizations. Um, there's one called Let Them Live organization that they post stories of women. Um, they'll, they'll give them like an, a, a fake name and say, you know, Leah has an abortion scheduled for Friday and she needs X amount of money and for diapers and for this and this, or else she has to get an abortion. She doesn't have another option. And so wow. can we help cover um, these co these the mm -hmm. cost of, you know, whatever it is that Leah needs. And yeah. so it's amazing because they're giving you real stories and you you get to see how you're you're actually helping set someone free to be able to keep their baby. Um and that's so cool. And, and so yeah, I, let them live yeah, let them live organization. Yeah. So that's that's something that I think that um as non Catholics, I don't like to say Protestants because I feel like it, that kind of has a certain connotation as well. But as non Catholic believers we, we really need to take a stance and, and say that we're going to fight for the lives of the unborn and not just that, but we're going to stand for human dignity and say that mm -hmm. um, every single life is precious, whether mm -hmm. someone is elderly or pre-born, that their life is important and valuable, that they're um, a unique person that God created who will never exist again and who has never existed before. And that's, mm -hmm. that's something worth protecting. Yeah. So yeah, I really, I really want to see us be stronger with that. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously people can go to let them live organization. That's a great yeah. way. And you also, you, you work with, um, live, li action. Li live action. Yeah. yeah. So is that something that's by invite only, or, or can people get involved with that as well? No, I think they have opportunities for volunteer stuff. I just do social media things for them. Kind of like, um, doing influencer kind of stuff, I mm -hmm. guess. Um, and their, but their organization, they post a ton of like things. If you've heard of project Veritas, they sort of do project Veritas style of um, things, exposing Planned Parenthood and other or, um, abortion organizations. So they recently uh, uncovered a whole thing that was going on with the University of Southern California, um, where they were live harvesting organs of unborn children while they're oh still alive, which oh just 
the whole thing is, is a mess, but they were part of uncovering that. And so um, they're really doing amazing work at educating people on what really happens when abortion is happening, um, educating people on fetal development, because that's a huge reason people are pro-choice is because they don't, they don't understand that a baby is existing from the beginning because um, they've been told it's just a blob of tissue. Yeah. So they've got really incredible, they've actually just released a video called Olivia that shows the, the development, animated development of a baby from day one, from conception all the way until birth. And it is, I cried while I was watching because it it's so beautiful. And it's the what first- Olivia That's from right. live yeah. action. Yeah. yeah. And so it shows um, it's the first medically correct fetal development video that's ever been made. So they they had that done by an incredible team of animators. And so they're doing a lot of really incredible work. They're a great organization to financially support. But also, if you want to volunteer, I think they do have opportunities for that. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know, I mean, when you said, you know, I believe that, you know, us as spirit filled, you know, Christians, we should be getting involved too. It's one thing to stand for. It. I was like, conviction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know I had the same thing happen. You know, I've been yeah. speaking out about it a little bit the last couple of years because this mm -hmm. is really connected to the feminist issue that I've been passionate about. Um, because I think abortion is really just the the crown jewel on women's oppression, to be honest with you, because it takes all responsibility for what's happened in creating a life and puts it all on women when it is not just a woman that creates a baby. Right. And so it's um it it's bothered me from the, the standpoint of like how it affects women, which I think is a huge part of it. Um, that's really valid. And then over the summer, I was invited to be a part of activist training for live action. And that's when I felt very convicted. And I was like, oh my goodness, I, we need to do more. We need to do yeah. better as as the church because the Catholic church is putting us to shame right now. Yeah, it. I think that say, statement, we need to do better as the church is, is one that um, kind of is like a one size fits all statement. Yeah. <laughs> but here's the thing, you know, it's like, it's, it is easy to sit there and be like, oh, the church isn't doing this. They're not doing that. And Christianity has failed in this. I'm like, but there is so much good that has been done. You know, I, I think even just recently I saw a stat and you might know more and this stat might not be true anymore. But the last I saw that, because I was talking to my um, brother-in-law's wife and she's not a Christian and she was talking about abortion. She was talking about, well, you know, Christians talk about being, uh, you know, against abortion, but they don't want to uh, adopt anyone. Well, first off, the adoption process is very complicated, but also I read that Christians are one of the largest groups that actually adopt yeah. children. So yes, kudos to Christians. <laughs> yes. And there's actually more to, to that statistic. That's even more interesting to me, which is that there's actually a waiting line, a significant waiting line for people adopting infants in the United States. So if you want to adopt a baby, which is what would happen if you're going to have an abortion and you change your mind and decide to place it up for adoption. Mm -hmm. That's an infancy adoption. It's completely different than what most people are talking about, which is um, the, I don't know why I can't think of the word right now, but where children are living in your home, foster care, goodness. Yeah. Then the foster we care system. Got there. We got there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so the foster care system, there are, uh, I, oh, I'm going to get the number one, but it's in the hundreds of thousands of children who are in the foster care system. And I believe about 160,000 of them are available for adoption. And that is a completely different system. It has nothing to do with if someone has an abortion or not. Um, and so when people talk and they try to act like these two statistics are somehow connected, they're not. So I also am a big advocate of Christians fostering and Christians adopting out of the foster care system, mm -hmm. not just internationally, because mm -hmm. we also need to, to, to lower those numbers. Mm -hmm. I think they said if one family from every church in the United States uh, fostered or adopted a child out of the foster care system, we would empty the system. Wow. And there would be no children who are stuck living in group homes or homes of people who are not believers. Mm -hmm. So again, that's something else that, yeah, it's true. And that's separate. I, I like to differentiate this because people like your sister-in-law was saying, like to say that you aren't really pro-life if you're not also doing X, Y, and Z. But that's not true. You can be against abortion just because abortion is evil and not be also fostering or adopting. You should also be doing those things that that's awesome to do that if you're able to, um, just as believers, like that's one of the specific things that we're called to do is to help with orphans. Um, but that doesn't mean that you're not pro-life. And so right. when people, if people try to pen that on you, just give them that yeah. response. Yeah, no I'm guilt still trips, pro-life. Yeah. yeah. And I actually just saw, I was looking it up. That's why I was looking down just in case anybody was like, pay attention, Jeff. <laughs> I was, um, I was looking up something. Uh, I saw it on Instagram yesterday and it was um, they that I think, I think it's in November, the Supreme Court's going to hear a case against Roe v. Wade. Um, and that doesn't, you know, that we can pray into that obviously, it, yeah. It's just exciting to me knowing that this is something that, you know, especially some of the laws that have just gotten passed in uh, mm -hmm. uh, Texas, um, you know, and uh, it's just the we're starting to see the snowball, the snowball effect. Yeah. Um, and it's really, really, really exciting. Um, so yeah. get and with involved, that, that, everybody. Yeah. With that case, sorry, I just want to clarify yeah, this. A lot good. of people don't understand this, but if Roe v. Wade is overturned, that doesn't make all abortion illegal. That means it goes to the states. Mm -hmm. So your individual state will have the choice to decide if they're going to legalize abortion and at what point it'll become illegal or not. So when people are acting like this is like going to be some huge, crazy, awful, like mm -hmm. backwards move for the country, people who are pro-choice are saying this, um, mm -hmm. it really wouldn't change that much. Uh, there would be some states that would have more strict things. So for example, Texas would have, Texas and Mississippi, I think are two states that have bills in place that if that is overturned, they will immediately default to no abortion. 
Um, but then you have states like New York and Colorado who and California, they're not going to they're not going to vote for that. Oregon as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm sure it's probably Washington. Yeah. But I know that California and New York and Colorado specifically are known as late term abortion hotspots. Mm. Um, and the other thing is that even with heart peoples, you know, this is kind of an unpopular opinion, even amongst pro-life people. So I'm probably going to ruffle a lot of feathers with this. But the heartbeat mm. bill is a step in the right direction, but it still allows for abortion. There's still abortion before heartbeat. And so many Christians I've heard, I've argued with extended family members and friends about this, but um, they'll tell me, well, they're, you're not alive until your heart is beating, which is not true. Actually, at conception is when your, your genetic code is created. And so at conception is when your, your DNA is created. That's never existed before. It's not the same as your mom's DNA. It's not the same as your dad's DNA. It determines your height, your eye color, your gender, mm. your proclivity to sports. If you're going to be a nerd or not, like all of these different things are determined <laughs> at that moment. Yes, yeah, same. And so all of those things are determined at that moment. And that's really the only consistent line we can draw scientifically um, as well as spiritually as, as far as where life begins. And so um, it is a step in the right direction. I celebrate that the heartbeat bill was passed in mm -hmm. Texas and I was really happy about it, but it's still, um, there's still going to be babies who are aborted in Texas and yeah, even in so states still, that have. Sounds like there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. Yes. And I just, I, I don't mean to say that as a Debbie Downer. I just, I, I don't, I've seen a lot of Christians posting like, wow, this is, this is like so crazy. Awesome. No, no more abortion. And I'm going, no, 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 no. <laughs> you're, you're alive. Whether your heart is beating or not, that that's mm -hmm. not a signal of life. You know, even for some surgeries, they stop your heart. That doesn't mean that you're not alive anymore. Yeah. That's a um, good point. Yeah. And so that's why even just from a scientific perspective, and I'll be posting more about this on my personal social media, if you guys follow me, but talking about how we can arrive at that conclusion that conception is where life begins um, from a non-religious perspective. Because I think that's important too, is we want to have, we want to have logic to what we believe as Christians. And if God is truth, and if he created everything through truth, then reality is going to line up with that. Science is going to line up with, with the truth of God. Mm. Um, and so we don't need to be scared of, of having a non-religious um, understanding or explanation for why we believe something. Yeah. Yeah. So good. I honestly, there's a lot more I want to <laughs> ask. But we're out of time, unfortunately. Um, Justice, thank you so much. This was, this was great. Thank you guys so much for having me. This was really, really fun. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So you mentioned your Instagram, your personal Instagram account, uh, where you, people can follow you there. Uh, yeah. Where are some other places they can follow you? Um, Instagram and YouTube are really the only places that I do much these days. So on Instagram, it's at Justice Hope Inlow still. Um, if you search Justice Keel, it'll come up. But yeah, Justice Hope Inlow. And then on YouTube, it's Justice Hope Keel, awesome. which is K-U-E-H-L. It doesn't sound like how it's spelled at all. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, everybody, that's our show for today. Um, have a wonderful weekend, a rest of the weekend, do something you love. Um, next week, 